Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed Australia weather forecast update for April 30th, 2025. On this Wednesday morning, starting things off with showers and storms along the New South Wales coastline, a few of which are heavy and have led to rainfall accumulations up to triple figures outside of the Jervis Bay and Ulladulla area. Rainfall accumulations have been relatively heavy along the New South Wales coastline for the last week or so and last night again falls between 25 and 50 millimetres were widespread towards the south of Sydney, especially for locations between Wollongong down towards Naruma. And you can see on the radar and the satellite imagery those heavy showers still moving around along the south New South Wales coastline. Uh, we've got some rainfall moving in towards the coastline at this point in time as we get further up the coast between Wollongong up towards Newcastle and a few showers and thunderstorms developing between a line of Canberra inland towards uh, Captain's Flat, Ulladulla and then up towards Wollongong as well. And that's just uh, uh, powered by that surface trough that's situated just offshore from the New South Wales coastline. Plenty of cloud activity, plenty of rain activity as well moving through. And whilst none of this is severe weather in itself. It is certainly some rather unpleasant weather that's moving through into New South Wales this morning. How many times can you say New South Wales in a minute? Well, I think I take the cake on that one. South of Sydney at the uh, International Airport, 40 kilometre an hour winds coming out of the southwest, and we're expecting those winds to pick up with showers that come through, so it is definitely a bit blowy on the New South Wales coastline this morning. There you go. There's another one. Add that to the tally. And then winds along the coastline that aren't associated with showers are between 20 and 30 kilometres an hour, and slightly stronger gusts in more exposed locations. So all in all rather unpleasant weather along New South Wales coastline this morning. Uh, we're expecting these showers and storms to continue throughout the remainder of today. They will ease off slowly throughout the course of tonight and we're not expecting heavy falls at any point throughout the remainder of today but if we do see that heavy rainfall come through it's going to come through in the next six or eight hours or so and pretty much clear out completely tonight. A few showers and storms persisting into tomorrow morning and then a resurgence in shower activity expected tomorrow afternoon and evening around Newcastle or at least for locations between Sydney up to about Kempsey and Coffs Harbour and then rainfall sliding north on the uh, New South Wales coastline up in towards southeastern Queensland through early Friday morning, throughout Friday, and then into Saturday morning where the rainfall should clear out pretty much completely for New South Wales as an, as an approaching high pressure system builds into the Tasman Sea. And this one is going to be a strong one just for a couple of days of weather forecasting beyond what we're expecting this weekend. That high pressure ridge will then head over towards New Zealand. It's expected to keep things pretty dry for New South Wales and Queensland until about the 7th or the 8th of May when rainfall will return for both states in the form of a cold front for the southern parts of New South Wales and in form of a bit of a, of a rainfall event for southeastern Queensland but again that is talk for a future forecast update. I'm going to keep it short and sweet for the uh, New South Wales area there at that throughout the first part of the video we've still got heavy rainfall to talk about up in far north Queensland I really want to get through this right now. Whilst the rainfall isn't concerningly heavy on the longer range forecast modelling it is still certainly something we should be talking about in great detail and we do have that heavier rainfall coming through uh, towards the end of this week. Heavy fall are expected to develop from tomorrow uh, throughout Friday into Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. So you can see seven day rainfall accumulations throughout the first week of May looking respectable along the Casper Coast and up into the Daintree as well. There is some good rainfall moving through into those locations too. The heaviest falls in the forecast modelling right now is about 260 millimetres outside of Innisfail and Fishery Falls. And again, as we go with far north Queensland, we can generally get away with doubling the rainfall prediction on these forecast models and still get a relatively accurate number, a relatively good forecast. So dare I say 500 millimetres could be inbound this weekend for uh, locations along the Cassery Coast and equally heavy rainfall accumulations up around two or 300, even 400 millimetres are possible into locations into the Daintree. Uh, major population centres such as Cairns and even those out into the Atherton Tableland, so Atherton, Mariba and Ravens though aren't expecting too much in the way of heavy rainfall uh, from this weather event. I'll get into the details on that right now. So as you can see up in far north Queensland, pleasant weather continues. A few clouds here and there and a bit of a low cloud as you get further inland, but for the most part, it is shower and cloud free across north Queensland. It's not as pretty as it was yesterday, but it's still pretty picture perfect up there. So enjoy the weather while it lasts. We've got more clear weather coming through throughout the remainder of today. We've got some of those showers still moving through into interior parts of Queensland, but again, they're nothing heavy and nothing serious to be worrying about. Just unpleasant weather moving through central north Queensland throughout today and into early tomorrow morning. And then those showers will begin to build from about midday tomorrow across the Casper Coast and really begin to funnel into North Queensland through early Friday morning. The rainfall will uh, really start to pick up, like I said, Friday morning and then into Friday afternoon, and it will be at its heaviest streaming in in the form of heavy showers and downpours through Friday night into Saturday morning and continuing moderate heavier times through Saturday and into early Sunday morning when the rainfall will once again pick up through Sunday and into Monday. Heavy falls are expected to occur on both Friday night and into Sunday morning, and then rainfall will also continue 
in a moderate fashion on Saturday and into Monday as well. A bit of a confusing way to uh, put that, but again, heavy rainfall expected on the 2nd and the 4th, and then more, more moderate rainfall can be expected on the 3rd and the 5th. Showers and storms will clear out for the most part through Tuesday the 6th of May, but they will continue into the 7th and the 8th, Wednesday and Thursday respectively, before completely clearing out as we get out to about the 10th of May and the rainfall up in far north Queensland. Pretty much done and dusted at that point in time. Whilst we do expect heavy rainfall up in far north Queensland at this time of the year, it is not uh, unusual to see rainfall like this at all uh, at this time of the year, but it certainly is something to... Um keep in the back of your head that this rainfall here could be problematic for some locations. So whilst we're talking about heavy rainfall coming through on Friday night and into Sunday morning where we could be talking about rain rates maxing out at about 60 or 70 millimetres an hour for some locations in the absolute heaviest of showers and if we do get convergent zone flows start to fire which isn't looking awfully likely on the rainfall uh, forecast that we just took a look at uh, but if they do fire it we'll be seeing some pretty significant rainfall accumulations as well. At this point in time I do expect widespread falls between 100 and 300 millimetres Meters north of Cardwell, so through Tali, Innisfail, and then up towards the Yarraba Peninsula. Inland areas such as Atherton, Ravenson, Mariba shouldn't crack triple figure rainfall accumulations, even if you're uh, adding all of the rainfall expected for the first week of May. And then uh, totals between 100 and 250 millimetres expected north of Port Douglas through Mossman, Woodshill, Woodshill, and up towards Cooktown as well. The Yarraba Peninsula is expected to cop a pretty good deluge as well, especially considering that the majority of this rainfall is going to be coming in from the southeast or even the south southeast end uh, at times and that's why Cairns isn't expecting too much in the way of rainfall. The Yarraba Peninsula will block all of that rainfall for Cairns and that's also why the Castery Coast is expected to be the runaway wettest place here in terms of rainfall accumulations. I'm not writing off falls between 400 and 500 millimetres as well inland from Innisfail so I believe around the South Johnston area and then up towards Fishery Falls, Gorton Vale and Berlin and Kerr. Rainfall accumulations could be very heavy at times especially through Sunday morning when the heaviest falls are expected to come through but don't write off the rainfall on Friday night and into early Saturday morning we're expecting to wake up with to some rather swollen rivers on Saturday morning and some large puddles up around far north Queensland. If you live in an ultra flood prone area or you've got property or livestock in an ultra flood prone location up in far north Queensland I would recommend beginning to move it uh, towards uh, or beginning to make those precautions to keep it safe and sound throughout this event here. Whilst I'm not expecting widespread moderate or major flooding there's certainly the chance of some minor flooding especially considering how saturated parts of far north Queensland are and along the Cassidy Coast. So again, if you do have uh, livestock, machinery or property, anything that you want to keep protected, I guess, from the floodwaters at the uh, minor flood alerts or just above the minor flood alerts, then I recommend moving it to higher ground or protecting it by any means possible. At this point in time, it definitely looks like some rainfall uh, is coming through. That will be enough to cause some minor flooding, especially through Sunday morning into Sunday evening. But again, the it, it's a very touch and go forecast on that right now. The rainfall here is certainly heavy enough in every other part part of Australia to cause some minor or moderate riverine flooding. In fact, 500 millimetres would cause major flooding pretty much everywhere else. But we are talking about far north Queensland. This rainfall is still business as usual up there, but they are designed to flood and this rainfall could certainly cause some flooding problems here and there. I just thought that that's definitely something worth keeping in the back of your head if you are a far north Queensland resident. Those heavy showers coming through Friday night and into Sunday morning, they certainly could cause some problems, that's for sure. Especially if we get heavy rainfall coming through on Friday or soaking rainfall, which would be even worse for locations and then the rainfall just came in big dumps on Sunday which is honestly looking quite likely. Uh, that would certainly paint a pretty ugly picture for far north Queensland on the flooding standpoint up there. Uh, if you're watching from North Queensland, so Townsville, even into the Whit Sundays and Mackay, you're not expecting too much rainfall down there. A couple of showers possible here and there for Townsville, but the rain dome will be in full swing, though southeasterlies keeping the rainfall out of Townsville. Southeasterly winds could bring up to 50 millimetres through this weekend into the Whit Sundays and around Mackay, and we could be seeing some heavier accumulations up around Proserpine, where triple figure rainfall accumulations are not being ruled out at this point in time. We also have some decent rainfall accumulations outside of Rockhampton and then down towards Gladstone as well. We've got plenty of shower activity expected to line the Queensland coastline and as such through this weekend we can be expecting a couple of heavy showers in those locations as well and I wouldn't be riding off up to 50 millimeters falling on a Sunday or Monday around the Rockhampton or Yapoon area. At this point in time it definitely looks like all of the rainfall for North Queensland is going to remain coastal based and any rainfall that does fall is not expected to penetrate too far inland so unless you're right on the coast don't get your hopes up for anything more than about 10 or 15 millimeters at this point in time. And that basically does it for North Queensland. 
Queensland. There'll be future updates on this as well, so make sure you are staying in the know, staying aware uh, about this weather event, and subscribe and uh, comment as well if you've got any questions uh, about this weather event as well, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Let's head over now to the Northern Territory. We do still have Tropical Low 30U, surprise, surprise, kicking, and I'm talking about it not because it's a threat to Australia at all. In fact, it's over Timor at this point in time, and it's raced into the Timor Sea overnight. I'll see if I can get that 12-hour radar and satellite loop to work because it has done a lot of moving, that's for sure. It's just fascinating fascinating how long tracked and how long lived this system has it's been nearly it's been nearly kicking for a month and if it lasts for one more day it'll get itself into May so this system here certainly has been not a record breaking one or, any, or a significant one by any stretch of the imagination but it has been that long tracked tropical low it's not uncommon to see that but again I find them very interesting to see uh, on the radar and the satellite imagery and again this system here whilst it is definitely on its last legs moving over Timor right now and providing some rainfall there unfortunately with this system being dragged out into the Timor or see the rainfall has now stopped pretty much completely for the Northern Territory and that's expected to be the case now for the next six or seven months. They've had a very disappointing dry se uh, wet season up there. It has felt like the dry season which is probably why I just twisted my words there. It's been extremely dry this wet season up in the Northern Territory and the rainfall unfortunately has never really materialised for a lot of locations so it, it definitely is going to be a tough dry season up in locations especially across Arnhem Land in the Northern Territory. They've struggled with rainfall for the past six months and I imagine they're going to struggle with water and water management over the next six months as well. There is a couple of good drops of rainfall on the forecast over the next seven days, and even if we push this out to the 14-day uh, rainfall forecast, there will be some good falls north of Australia here with those trade winds expected to be blowing quite hard, up to 600 millimetres, but unfortunately it's just too far north and too little too late at this time of the year to really uh, have, uh, have a significant and a positive impact on the Northern Territory's rainfall and water situation. A couple of good drops expected into the northeast of Arnhem Land, but unfortunately around Darwin and Catherine where the rainfall is or has been needed the most, the rainfall there is just not going to materialise. So again, 14 day rainfall accumulations are kind of pointless to look at. Any drop of rainfall that does come because it's very likely to rain in Darwin at some point in the next two weeks, so just treat every drop of rainfall as a bonus and make sure your uh, gutters are still pi uh, piped into your tank if you're using tank water or you've still got that water flowing into the dam. Uh, it'll be necessary. Uh, it's going to be a long dry season for a lot of people, I imagine, over in the Northern Territory. We also have a little bit of rainfall into interior parts of Queensland as well, into southwestern Queensland over the next 14 days, and it's nothing significant, but I've thought that this might get some media attention, any rainfall across those flood ravaged areas in southwestern Queensland that flow, that will flow into those uh, saturated river catchments. But I would just like to jump in and say that if they do get 30 or 40 millimetres out there, that's not going to cause any concerns whatsoever. It's just going to uh, top up those dams, maybe add a little bit to those river levels, but it's not going to cause major flooding. It's not even going to exacerbate the flooding situation that they've had out there because it would really take a whopper system to make things worse than what they currently are. I actually released a very interesting video, I was quite proud of it, uh, on the channel as well yesterday about the flooding situation in southwest Queensland, so feel free to give it a watch after this one. I'll leave it in the link to, uh, in the, linked in the pinned comment down below, but the rainfall now really starting to get out towards Lake Eyre, which is good news for Lake Eyre, and those that want to see some water contributions to it. Western Australia, we've got rainfall, but not before. We've got some heat coming through for southwest and western Australia. It's going to be a hot one today and it's going to be a hot one tomorrow. We're expecting a top into the high 20s into the Perth metro area today. Good to get up to 29 around Perth and 30 into the northern suburbs. Expecting 30 degrees into the northern parts of the wheat belt. It is going to be quite warm, that's for sure. And then tomorrow as that west coast trough properly builds up, we're expecting temperatures into the high 20s across much of the southwest and even into the early 30s around Perth where temperatures could rise as high as 31 or even 32 degrees Celsius. Uh, into the northern parts of the wheat belt as well, temperatures looking up to around 30, uh, pushing 30 32 or even 33 in locations and then as you get further north as well temperatures expected to rise up into the high 20s if not early 30s so it's going to get quite warm with the warmest temperatures outside of Coral Bay expected to be as high as about 33 or 34 degrees which is still quite warm even considering the time of the year we're now heading in towards May and these temperatures are significantly above average especially for the southwest of Western Australia but then things flip on their head for Friday we're expecting a storm front to move through into the southwest expecting showers and storms early in the morning for the southwest capes and then showers and storms building again Friday night and into early Saturday morning, developing into the Perth metro area actually through Saturday morning. I imagine I'm going to get woken up by the thunder and the rainfall once again into the Perth metro area, which will be a very pleasant surprise, that's for sure. Uh, plenty of rainfall is expected to go around with falls between 10 and 15 millimetres along the southwest capes and between 5 and 15 millimetres for the Perth metro area into early Saturday morning. Showers on the backside of this system coming through from the, uh, uh, from the late morning into the early afternoon, then showers still persisting into 
into early Sunday morning, but they will be few and far between. More showers expected to pipe up on Monday morning just briefly, and then those showers and rainfall uh, clearing it or contracting to the south coast through Monday evening and Tuesday, and then clearing from the south coastal regions through Tuesday and Wednesday as a high pressure ridge begins to build through Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and keeps things mostly dry for the southwest of Western Australia until about the second or even the third week of May when rainfall looks to return once again. The forecast models have been pretty dead set on some rainfall developing into the southwest, and it could be some pretty uh, reasonable rainfall as well between the 10th and the 15th of May at this point in time, but there are still too many discrepancies on the major forecast models for me to go really into depth about it at this point in time, so I will leave that for a future forecast discussion. Interesting stuff, that's for sure, and you can see rainfall accumulations along the southwest capes looking pretty healthy over the next 14 days. In fact, you can see rainfall accumulations have been up around that 20 to 30 millimetre mark into the Perth metro area in the 14-day rainfall accumulation forecast, but if we take into account the rainfall that could come in between the 10th and the 15th of May, we could be talking about accumulations up to 125 millimetres along parts of the south coastal region. Certainly some heavy stuff and certainly some very welcome stuff, that's for sure. But pulling it back to a more reasonable time frame from just the rainfall that's coming through from today, so realistically from Friday morning out to Monday the 5th of May, we could be seeing accumulations up to 50 millimetres along the south coast and rainfall accumulations between 20 and 30 millimetres along some of the capes and then inland into the hills adjacent to Perth and then falls into the Perth metro area between 10 and 15 millimetres, the majority of which will come through from the initial cold front itself on Saturday morning. It certainly is going to feel like winter though this weekend, that's for sure. Unfortunately, there's no real good rainfall going into the weed bulb, which is quite a shame, but at this point in time, the rainfall looking pretty healthy for the southwest corner, and I cannot complain, especially for this time of the year. It's highly unusual to get heavy force into the southwest corner of Western Australia until at least late May, if not early June. And that is going to do it for today's weather forecast. I do hope you've enjoyed it or found it informative. Again, thank you so much for all of the recent support on the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already and leave a like on the video while you're at it. The support lately has been much appreciated. But that is all for me today and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.